The business of business and the business of life are one and the same. And to bring the infinite possibility out of any individual is extremely simple. It's that understanding, one, that that infinite possibility exists within you, and two, discovering a way in which that infinite possibility can emerge. How in the world could I be so cheated that Christ lived 2,000 years ago? And here I am, feeling lost and praying my rosary beads because I had this feeling, I don't know where you are, I don't know who you are, but I know you are. And I can't find you, so you better find me. And eventually I found my way to India, not really having the courage to come because I, I hadn't traveled in this area. And I was on business with a partner of mine in uh, London when I became overcome with the desire to go to India. And I left uh, my partner and my wife at that time uh, as they were going to return from the trip, waved goodbye to them, told them that I was on my way to India. And the end result of that was when I showed up over here looking something like Sammy Davis Jr. with all my jewelry on. I think I was, I, if I recall, I had on a winter blue blazer, a pink shirt, a polka dot tie, a pair of gray slacks, wingtip shoes. It was terribly warm. I was carrying an overcoat and dragging a bag behind me, which was leaking because somebody said that I should bring some water. So clearly, coming into an ashram like this, I must have looked like the most classic lost soul on earth. And... Uh, that was the beginning. Because what I've learned here is not intellectual. What I've learned here is quietude. What I've learned is not from his discourses, although there's much to be learned, but from the glances in his eyes. From simply breathing the same air. From bringing in a proximity and finding out that his life is in fact his message. Recognizing that there's nothing to do except cease stopping something wonderful from happening. Knowing without a doubt that the business of life and the business of business and the business of family and the business of time are all the same. When he looks into your eyes this process begins mm -hmm. when he touches you physically, mm -hmm. when he speaks to you, mm -hmm. when he takes a letter from you, when he walks close to you, something begins to happen. In fact, this is so simple that it must be divine because humans make things complex. That's true. And when Swami says watch, I take it literally. I think that Swami and his instructions if the word is not contained in the dictionary of the language he's speaking in, we'll define that word so you'll understand. So Swami gives the instructions, watch, and that's why he gives gifts many times of a watch, because it's a living instruction of observation. To stand back and simply watch words, action, thought, character, heart, all the aspects of humanity. Then he says, be happy. But he defines one word in all of that, happy, unity with divinity. Now, if we go to the dictionary and look up what the word be means, it simply isness. So if one would simply watch, then something would occur that would result in unity with divinity. Failure can be an opportunity because very simply when everything goes along swimmingly, positively, abundantly, we tend to forget what we're really trying to build, as it were. When you have a problem, don't you pray? Don't you hang on to the feet of the Lord? So if a person wants to have a more even life, if that's possible, then wouldn't it make a great deal of sense to hang on to his feet when things are good? Because then the purpose of fear, the purpose of lack, the purpose of pain, the purpose of separation, 
becomes less necessary in the human experience, which only has one purpose. And the purpose of humanity is union with divinity, according to Baba. The message is extraordinarily simple. And yes, I'm very much involved in business. But I firmly believe that success in the business environment is not a product of what you do, but a product of what you are. And the product of what you are is a product of watch and be happy. And I also firmly believe in my life that every single event is a gift. And I don't have the ability to define for you what that gift means. Some of it hurts terribly. Some of it's pleasing. But every single event in my life to this point, and I've had some shocking events, has done nothing to me, but has done something for me. So why should it change? Self. Because each of us are our own responsibility. And if you wish to save the world, save yourself in terms of finding yourself. A person in the midst of a tragedy is in generally in the midst of being a bit deranged by the horror. So the only thing you can do is not to speak but possibly just to touch. But what does that person do? That's the question. That person has an opportunity mm. that he can either succeed in, succeed in or fail in. And the opportunity is to recognize that divinity knows better than humanity. And divinity never hurts. For those who believe that Swami is hard, don't realize that Swami draws you here when you most need it and carries you through every single event, be it tragedy or success. Because the greatest tragedy on earth can be success if you become lost. I've experienced tragedy even recently, and let me tell you that it is all good. Now, the body will fall down because we all carry this human aspect of what we are. Mm -hmm. And tears will come to the eyes. Yes. And there'll be the shaking and, and even moments of not knowing really left from right. But there's a quietude deep down inside that if you can hold on to, even in the worst of times, it will become the best of times. It will be an opportunity to grow, an opportunity in strength. In tragedies that I've had, I've lost nothing, but I've gained everything. Because in the silence of his eyes, his life is his message. Inside you grows a silence that becomes a partner that will, in every single event, rise to the circumstances as long as you cease stopping it from happening. Watch. Don't participate in the thought. Be in the now. Don't fool around with the past. Past is past. The future is not our business. Our business is now. And in the now, only watch. That's the gift that's here. That's the gift you can leave with. Don't try and intellectualize it. Don't take it apart in little bits and pieces. Feel it. Know it. Marry it. Be it. Worship it. But don't try and understand it. Because understanding is what blocks and stops acceptance. Why should it be there? And if you can't get rid of a thought that's less than what would be expected of you, you certainly have the great ability as a human to only think about one thing at a time. So you could pick some wonderful time in your life. If you're given to prayer, you might pray. If you can do neither, maybe you should clean something or do some work. But don't dwell on a thought you didn't invite. So watch a thought. Character. How are you acting towards another person? Has it ever occurred to you that you might make amends for the things you've done to hurt others during your life as we all have. 
your heart? Are you feeling compassion? I'm not particularly sure that the world today is any different than when we were cavemen, except different clothes. But uh, the magnitude of the horror is magnified. It will always be magnified as technology. The That's right. Can man survive as technology? And the man will only survive as technology if he rises above the negative characteristics of his humanity. So the question is, why is man not able to rise above? Because man doesn't want to. <laughs> What's you, the attraction for him to be in uh, the gutter? The attraction of the gutter is excitement, power, greed, the ultimate corrupting. So in the world today, in every individual, there's both good and its opposite. It's up to the individual as to which of those two entities will rule the day. Well, the madness is that, you know, the person with $200 million, U.S. dollars, loses $1 million. You have to take them to the hospital and give them oxygen. <laughs> I know that. It's uh, very simple. Give it away. And if you do, you may remain vibrant because you're always young because you have to make it again. My wife, who's recently deceased, gave to her children their inheritance in their lifetime. That's the trick. I don't have material needs. I do my business because Swami told me to do the business. It's not my business. It's his business. And he is not the body we see. So I have no need for further material, although I do live well and comfortably. But I do have a duty to perform a task, the results of which are not in my hands, but the work is. And Swami is kind enough, divinity is kind enough, that I actually like what I do. So I play a game. But how that game works out is it's not up to me. But what is up to me is to do the most excellent possible job to treat everyone that I deal with with the highest possible ethic, to discipline wrongdoing, and to fight evil wherever I see it. And evil is very clear. It's hurting others. Divinity, to me, is a word I use in place of the word God, because I don't think the human language approaches what's there. I can only tell you that in Swami's presence, he once said to me, I will give you a glimpse of Swami. Now, I can't explain what that is, but I can tell you that he doesn't lie. And when he says he's going to do something, he does it. And that glimpse is not something that I can explain to you, but I can tell you firmly, only by comparison to something else, that it is beyond the word God. So divine to me means non-conceptual. God is the highest possible thought of the conceptual human being, and nothing compared to what's out there. The power of it, the magnificence of it, the totality of it, and all available. I learn more from the silence between Swami's words than I learn from words. When I listen to Swami, I try and stay empty because l very few people understand what the word listen means. Listen means mentally shut up. You can't listen if you're thinking about what you're going to say because you're not listening. So the practice of listening is really something that develops in a sense by contemplation, meditation a bit, but by slowing down thoughts, by relaxation if it was, of the mind. But if you can listen a little, then something starts to happen. Because if one would only look at the teachings of Jesus Christ, and compare them to the teachings of Swami, and recognize there are many roads, but they all lead to the same destination. How could there be any contradiction when the message is love?